this person here she's a nurse she's a uk rn which means united kingdom registered nurse. <laughs> united kingdom registered nurse so she's we're going to be having a chat just a chat we're not doing something very serious a chat about you know how she transitioned from being being a nigerian nurse to a uk registered nurse so She's going to give you tips on how to transition, how she got sponsored, and how she migrated from Nigeria to the United Kingdom. So if that's something you'd like to watch, keep watching. My name is Susanna. Welcome to my channel. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? How has it been? I know it's been a while. I'm so sorry. I, I just didn't want to come in here, come up here if I didn't have anything tangible to say. But, um, yeah, I've got things to say now and I've got somebody here who has a lot of things to share with you. I practically begged her for this. I'm not paying her, but, um, you know. So this is Titi. Titi is my friend. We've been friends since secondary school and I came to visit her here at our city. Or oh, is this a town? town i guess town is a town so um i just thought you know let's do a video i'm going to link the vlog you know i did a little bit of a vlog coming down here and the time we spent together i'm going to link it here for you to watch or here whichever way but anyway enough talk so titi how far i'm fine i'm good <laughs> because i don't know why you're like you're yeah, trying to show relax. this let me relax ah. because this is my first time on youtube so maybe i feel a bit um don't worry, don't so worry. Let me relax. They won't bite. They're nice <laughs> people. Anyway, um, so let's just go straight to the point, Kosejo. Okay. And um, so you are a nurse. Yes, I am. And from my understanding, you've been a nurse before you left the country. So it's not like you came here to study nursing and then. So your case is different from people like, I don't know, people like my husband who are international students. So you are a skilled worker. Yes. And on this channel, we've spoken a lot about international students and how to, you know, become one. But, sh but our own visa is different from the kind of visa that we have. So, you are a registered nurse, which makes you a skilled worker. Tell us a bit about, you know, the kind of visa you have and the, you know, the, um, what's that English? Um, the conditions that surround it. Okay, um, so I have the skilled workers visa, which means that um, I have, I'm working with um, a particular organization which has sponsored me to come to the UK. And this means that um, since I have the sponsorship, this is called the certificate of sponsorship of the organization, I have to stick to the organization. So I am here because of the certificate of sponsorship I got from my trust. Okay. So by trust, you mean like hospital? Yes, hospital. Okay. 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 So the hospital sponsors you to come to the U UK. Move any US. Mm -hmm. UK. Sponsors you to come to the UK, and then you are sort of like loyal to them in terms of, you know, sponsorship. Okay. Yes. So. For somebody that is a nurse now, who just graduated and is a nurse and is trying to, you know, move from Nigeria, do you have to have worked in the? Do you have to have worked in Nigeria before you can be accepted, you know, here? Well, it's not um, it's not mandatory for you to work in Nigeria before you can get a job here. But I feel like every organization have to um. They need someone that is skilled, someone that has a level of experience. So um, you certainly need to have a level of experience before you can work here. It doesn't have to be much mm -hmm. because I had just um, about two years experience before coming here. So it doesn't have to be something big, but you have to. Ha you certainly have to have experience. I actually agree because at the end of it, when you come here, they're going to you know, teach you a lot of things that are very different from what we are used to in Nigeria anyway. So, um, how do you get to that point where you pick a you know, um, university? <laughs> you pick a hospital to sponsor you. Do you go? So, I am a nurse now, and I'm thinking of you know leaving Nigeria. Where do I start from? Okay, um, I think this is pretty obvious. Um, of course, you get your passport first. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yes, definitely. <laughs> 
so um when you get your passport you um you need to be verified mm-hmm. even before you start looking for jobs or verification yeah i'll explain that even before you need to start um get looking for jobs you need to be verified by you need to reg sorry excuse me you need to register with the nursing and midwifery council of uk yeah so once you register with them you pay a certain amount of money to be registered with them and tell us um i think the registration fee is 140 pounds yeah so um when you get registered with them you need to be verified which means the nursing and midwifery council of Nigeria needs to verify to the nursing and midwifery council of the UK that yes you are really a nurse in Nigeria and you have a license so and that also requires some amount of money I, I know things are changing during my time I did the old verification um, and I paid about 17,500 yeah so I think things are changing now there's new verification online verification so it requires money so once you are verified and you know they figure out that you are actually a registered nurse, what next? So after verification, um, you need IELTS to come here. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, you cannot um, come here without wow. IELTS. Okay, so, hmm, so sorry for you guys who have been avoiding IELTS, but so for those who don't know, because I don't want to assume everybody knows what IELTS means. It's it's like um, an English um, exam, right? Yeah. Like multiple choice exam. It has reading, listening, writing, and speaking. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So because my no right are yet. So and a lot of people are doing it. It's very popular in Nigeria. There are a lot of centers that are doing it. So I guess the, I know that there are different kinds. Is it the academic one or is it um, the general you need the academic IELTS okay so as a nurse you need an academic okay is there a lim- is there like a cross um like ma- a cut of mark yeah of mark. so um for nurses you have to have um an overall of 7.0 um 7.0 in listening 7.0 in um speaking 7.0 in um which other one no, no, no. In reading, yeah, then a 6.5. You can have a 6.5 in um, writing, but you have to have 7.0 overall. Wow, that's tough. <sighs> but was the exam tough for you? Well, because, you know, IELTS has this reputation of being a very tough um, exam. What, how was it for you? Well, I think you just need to practice because at the time I was even working, so it was a bit hard for me to, like... Um, study and um, work but i think you just need practice practice but you don't need to get nine or eight just practice and you know get the cut of mark do they need to like do like tutorials because i know there are a lot of people doing tutorials in nigeria and online as well yes you definitely need tutorials because um you can't do it on your own you need people's I- people's ideas um, people that have done it before tutorials people to put you through the pros and cons and everything so good luck to anybody who is doing that. <laughs> good luck. So um, moving on, after you've passed the IELTS, you've done, the re- you've done the re- uh, verification, you've done the IELTS, what next in summary? Then you do your CBT. CBT is like, um, CBT is like um, um, the UK exam to confirm that, okay, yes, you're a qualified nurse. Yeah, so it's done in Nigeria. You have to pay some amount of money for that i think i paid about 83 pounds yeah I, yeah it's three pounds i don't know it might have changed now but that was what i paid and um <clears throat> it's like an exam like i said earlier it's like an exam uk exam done in nigeria to confirm that okay you to test your knowledge yeah yeah, yeah as a nurse then after that once you pass your cbt you have all the requirements then you start looking for job so that's looking for the job is the main thing yeah. that is where people get stuck people sometimes spend two months three months up to five months up to seven months yeah. and so that's the main thing okay so for you how were you able to you know find a job was it at the first 
try or <laughs> the fiftieth try. <laughs> Trust me, it's it's not easy. I applied to more than hundred hospitals <laughs> before I got a job. Well, I'm not trying to scare anybody, mm-hmm. but it takes a lot of work. Yeah, I think it's important um, and for people to know that it's not that easy. And yeah. so, decides to get a job. Um, you can go to trackjobs.com. You can go to nhsjobs.com. And I think once you have um, 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 someone to put you through, yeah. I think more videos should be done about putting people through on how to get jobs because there are specific ways to do it, which we, we didn't know. We're just doing anything. So once you go to track jobs or... Um, NHS jobs um, you have to create an account and then you have to specifically search for international jobs mm-hmm. yeah so if you if you apply for jobs that do, that are not willing to sponsor you definitely get rejected because that's not what they're looking for um, so you need to also have um, a good supporting statement a supporting statement is like a part in the application where they they give you the opportunity to sell yourself out so um when i first started applying i i just wrote about <laughs> about like eight lines of supporting statements i just wrote okay i'm a nurse i can do this i can do that just eight lines but no that's not like what they're looking for you don't have to write like 100 lines of rubbish but they need to actually see what they're looking for you need to go to the hospital's trust that's why it takes um a lot of work Mm -hmm. you need to know um after getting the supporting statement um in your supporting statement you need to go to the hospital's website to look for the core values so in your supporting statement you have to state that you align with their core values for instance if the hospital's core values is um, excellence caring for patients teamwork you have to put all of that in your supporting statement you also have to look at the job dis- description of what they want in the job um that they put out so if they tell you they are looking for someone that is a good team player someone that is flexible and your supporting statement you're writing um i can i'm punctual that's not what they're looking for so you might not get the job. so just to wrap that up it, it, you're just trying to say like it's better to you know apply for five even if just five um companies or five hospitals you apply for make sure your applications are strong than you know applying for 100 and then you know yes. yeah so you know just because of time and um once you're done with that and you get a job i'm assuming the sponsor you did send you a letter or an email that congratulations yeah so you don't just get a job miraculously like that so once your um application gets um accepted you're s- scheduled for an interview so Depending on how well you do in the interview, if you are um, accepted, they send you an offer letter. So once you have your offer letter, you're closer to getting your job. Yeah, so you just, once you get your offer letter, you read it thoroughly and be sure of what you are signing. Because there are some offers that are not, not, yeah. not worth it at all. So research about where the place is, the, the trust, everything. Do your research properly. After the offer, you wait for your COS. Once you get sorry, COS, sorry to cut you off. What's COS? COS is certificate of sponsorship. That's like the yeah, just like for students, CAS. Yeah. yeah. So once you get your certificate of sponsorship, then you start applying for your visa. So um, if you want to have more information about to apply for visa i have a video on that i don't want to you know talk a little bit i think it's the same thing for everybody yeah, anyway and you just go in with all the necessary documents and then you apply for your visa so i'm going to link a video for that because i have much more important questions to ask now that you are here congratulations Thank you. how has it been you know what's the difference between just in in shorter terms or in short terms as, what's the difference between being a Nigerian nurse and a you know a UK nurse? Okay, I think the difference is just um, the workload. 
for me, most of what I'm saying is my experience. Um, the workload in the UK is more than Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. And is there a reason why? Is it like there are not a lot of nurses here or that's just how it is? Well, I honestly don't know why the workload is still, but because they keep recruiting <laughs> every month. <laughs> they keep recruiting. But yes, we still have lots of patients so, so, taken. So I don't know. I don't know. I guess this is the way of it. If you've given a bill, how are you still lot of See, there are too many space for you to fill. So just don't give up. They need they need more. They can't. I don't think they, they can. They need more. They need they more. Need more. Yeah. There's nothing like there are too much nurses. They need more, so just the workload. Okay, why not? Okay, I think that's a con. But the pros of you know. Okay, the pros here, of course, the pay is very much better than back home, and then um, um, the working conditions. You have um, the next, the equipment you need, and everything is easily accessible. Yeah. So honestly, it's kind of like a win-win. As long as you know you go through the necessary steps, I guess. Like every other thing, you need to go through the steps. You can't the steps. You can't avoid all these things. And I, I guess once that is sorted out, you'll be fine. So just us, how has life been in? No, okay, outside of being in us, how has life been in you know in the UK for you? Uh, life is life has been very good. You know, I have friends around and. I've not really felt that loneliness people talk about. Yeah, yeah so it's been good. I, I love fun, so I go out, I enjoy myself. Yeah. <laughs> you can only live once. So <laughs> oh my I God. enjoy myself and just, you know. Try and, you know, because you're working with, how many hours do you work a day? I work 12 hours. Imagine. So you need to rest. You need to relax. Once you get here, is there any other exams you need to do? Is there any other thing you need to do? Yes. There's an almighty OSCE you need to write. Ooh, okay. So OSCE is like the practical va- version of CBT. You know, I mentioned CBT earlier, mm-hmm. which is like to test your knowledge about your nursing. That's like theory. So when you come here, you do OSCE. That's practical. So if you don't pass OSCE, what does that mean for you? Well, there are three attempts at OSCE. Um, if you don't pass the first time, um, try you try again. However, some trusts, I think most trusts sponsor the first a- attempt. Um, some trusts sponsor second attempt. Um, and third attempt, I really don't know about people who write third attempt, but I don't know. But there's a third attempt. All right, so um, once you pass your OSCE, is that it? Is that... Do you have to like do something else? Is there anything else? Yeah, there are, there are lots of um, fees to pay that I've not mentioned here. Mm. So once you um, pass your um, OSCE, you can't. I I did pay mine in Nigeria though, so you can pay in Nigeria. You can pay when you get here. There's also a fee, one hundred and fifty three pounds. Um, that's like um, the final fee to pay to NMC UK so once you pass your OSCE you get your license you start working that's it. That's it. so all the money you've been paying since to share your sponsor they cannot help you you know well well to be fair they sponsored a lot of things um, the visa was sponsored by my trust not all trusts we do that though that's why you need to read your offer letter properly they sponsored my my um, visa and then they sponsored my flights. They sponsored my first month accommodation. Okay, okay. My first month accommodation in the UK. Some trusts will sponsor two months. Some trusts will sponsor three months of your accommodation. So it all depends on your um, on your offer letter. And then every other thing, like my TB, my IELTS, my um, every other thing I did, I did with my money. But they are going to reimburse me. But have they reimbursed you? Is this something that you see? <laughs> but anyway, honestly, they've tried. Because for them to be able to do all that, international students don't have that luxury. So I think skilled worker is, it's, it's, I think it's, it's more, much more, you know, 
it's much more easier yeah it yeah it has more perks agree. yeah it has more perks yeah. so do you have any other tips to give to you know nurses that are trying to you know write these exams or the any stage of the process do you have any tips to give along well i'll just say consistency is key just keep doing whatever you're doing don't give up they still need lots of nurses here trust me so research ask people that have been there before i'm ready to help um, people who ask me so ask questions don't just stay in a particular place and be lost and keep doing it yourself ask people ask questions keep moving keep going don't give up please come here once once more nigerian okay all right guys thank you so much for watching oh before we go um being a nurse is different but being a nigerian nurse is the experience different for you like in terms of you know your work condition is there any like um maltreatment is there anything like you know bias discrimination i think these are things we need to actually talk about because we are talking about all these glorious things but at the same time we need to talk about our experience as human beings is it different here working as a nurse coming from nigeria yes of course um as a black as a nigerian in the uk is um different um um because as a Nigerian in the UK, of course, it's different. Yeah. Um, for me, my experience, I had um, about six Nigerian nurses on my ward before I came. So it was pretty easy for me because I already had them. Anything I don't know, I just run to the Nigerian nurses, you know. Yeah. But for the people that came before me, they had this, you know, really it's bad ex hard. Yeah, it was hard for them because there was no black to really relate to and it was just as if they didn't know anything and that was not the case it was because it was a new environment for them so it was pretty hard for them to blend in it took like quite um a long time for them to blend in but for me it was easier because i had them well, thank you so much for the information and i hope some we've helped somebody out there i don't it doesn't matter you know how many it doesn't matter the numbers as long as we help someone out there that's what this video is all about so thank you so much for coming okay, um, and oh one, okay one, sorry, more. <laughs> sorry one more thing um i think i just summarized yeah, the definitely. process yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i think i can give her um some of the links mm -hmm. to the applications which will be added to the, the description. description yes some yeah. of the fees to be paid how to go by um step by step and it to be properly um stated so thank you so much for watching if you like this kind of videos if you like this video you just watch click that like thing that looks like this like the video and subscribe and share with somebody who would love to you know, learn more about this share it on all social medias and thank you for 600 subscribers thank you guys so much and um i'll see you in the next video and please go and watch my vlog all right okay bye Bye. Bye.